So they've been in power for 10 years. What have they done for Kerala? What have they done for Tiruvanthapuram? This gentleman has been a minister for IT for two and a half years. Has he even brought a single thing, a, a little pin or a chip to our Technopark in Trivandrum? Absolutely zero. The first thing that he has done is a week after being announced as the candidate of the BGP, he has come and announced 10 AI centers. Till then, Kerala was a blank slate for them. Why should anyone trust any promise made by the BJP when their track record is zero? There is a very important sort of ideological difference between what we stand for and what our opponents stand for. And the principle of India's diversity, pluralism, oneness, uh, versus a politics of Hindutva, Hindi, Hindustan, which is not something that the people of Kerala should be voting for. So all of this is very much part of my appeal to the voters of Trivandrum. Your opponent, the BJP candidate, is saying that uh, no development has happened or it has not reached the extent and vote for someone who's going to sit in power, then they'll develop Kerala. Yeah, yeah. So they've been in power for 10 years. What have they done for Kerala? What have they done for Tiruvanthapuram? This gentleman has been a minister for IT for two and a half years. Has he even brought a single thing, a, a little pin or a chip to our Technopark in Trivandrum? Absolutely zero. The first thing that he has done is a week after being announced as the candidate of the BGP, he has come and announced 10 AI centers. Till then, Kerala was a blank slate for them. In fact, the opposite is true. The BGP government has broken three public promises they made in the last 10 years. They promised Kerala an AIMS. There is no AIMS in Kerala yet. They promised Kerala a National University of Ayurveda. They put it in Gujarat instead. They promised Kerala an upgrade of the National Institute of Speech and Hearing here in Tiruvannathapuram into a National University for Disability Studies. That's in their budget speech of 2015-16. They went and took that and gave it to the Northeast. So at the end of the day, they take their politics where it suits them, but they make promises where it suits them, and they break all their promises. Why should anyone trust any promise made by the BJP when their track record is zero? in every single promise. Sadhuji, now the biggest talking point is the electoral bonds. Do you think the Congress is in on a back foot in uh, actually criticizing it? Absolutely not, because the electoral bonds have... Really, there are some incredibly serious questions to ask about the fact that you are finding companies that have no serious track record donating more than their official profits. You've got companies that have given uh, uh, donations to electoral bonds or purchase electoral bonds and then mysteriously won contracts within a few weeks thereafter. You have companies that have been raided by CBI, ED, IT and then suddenly they're giving electoral bonds later. This is unfortunately a very, very bad impression of our democracy that's been given to all those who follow this information because it looks like, as Rahul Gandhi said yesterday, an extortion racket at work. And it's a disgrace that this is happening in an established democracy like ours. But sir, Congress also accepted it. I mean, there is no, obviously the electoral bonds are announced by the government and they're part of the law of the land. Why should we turn them down? It's not that we were getting very much of them. What we got, we accepted, of course. If it's a legal means of finance, we'll accept it. Now the security, the Supreme Court has said it's completely unconstitutional. We're very happy not to accept any more. Let's, let's see what happens. Kerala Chief Minister Pindrai Vijayan He, he actually alleged that the only person in parliament to participate in the CA debate was his party's sole MP. I, I really wonder you know, where he gets his, uh, his information from and whether he has anyone on his staff to do some basic homework. I was the one who was the first one to oppose the introduction of the CAA, followed by E.T. Mohammed Bashir of the Muslim League, who was a UDF ally. In the debate, I spoke against the CIA. Uh, the CAA, I beg your pardon, and I made it very clear that as far as we were concerned, our fundamental issue was one of principle. That it was on the one hand, an introduction of a religious principle into citizenship, which is a violation of the basic understanding of the Constitution, Article 14, which pledges equality to everybody. But equally, it is a betrayal of the millennial civilizational traditions of India where Swami Vivekananda could stand in Chicago and say we've given refuge to people of every religion, every race that's been persecuted. That's how we are. And you're betraying that tradition of which Swami Vivekananda was so proud in excluding one religion from your room. If you had passed the CAA and said anybody facing persecution in our neighboring countries is welcome uh, to get fast-track citizenship if they've come before 31 December 2014, we would have all supported it. It's the introduction of the religious element that is the only thing we are opposing. And we made this very clear. What is more, in the actual debate, this is what we said. And all you have to do is go on Google, you'll find my opposing the introduction, my speech in the thing, you'll find the, the BJP chair interrupting my speech in order to wind it up, you'll fee, see me rebutting Shri Amit Shah. All of this happened in the debate. And as far as I'm concerned, 
This has been the Congress's stand consistently from the beginning of the introduction of the CAA to today. We have made no change in our stand. I myself have inaugurated seven protest rallies in the state of Kerala, from Kojikod to Palakkad, at that time protesting the CAA. Our stand has been consistent and clear and strong.